Hey everyone, it's Miss Seward. Today we'll be doing notes on section 2.2, which is about ecosystem services. Our learning objective for today is you being able to describe ecosystem services and describe the results of human disruptions to these ecosystem services. So today we'll be learning about the different categories of ecosystem services, what they are, and how human activities can disrupt these services. Now, one thing to keep in mind is ecosystem services. A lot of times we talk about them in the uh, connotation of money and the financial benefits that it has. So ecosystem services are goods that come from natural resources and have measurable value to humans. And again, often we're talking about the financial value to humans. Not always, but oftentimes. And there's going to be four different types of ecosystem services. The first one is provisioning. And these are goods that are taken directly from ecosystems or made from natural resources, such as like wood, paper, food. The next type of service is going to be regulating. And these are when natural ecosystems regulate our climate or air quality, which then reduces storm damage and healthcare costs. Another type of ecosystem service is going to be supporting services. And this is where natural ecosystems are going to support processes that we do ourselves, making them cheaper and easier. An example might be how bees pollinate our crops. And the fourth type is gonna be cultural. This is where money is generated by recreation, such as parks, camping, tours, or provides us with scientific knowledge. Now humans, have a massive impact on most of these ecosystems and often disrupt these services. And the human activity is going to disrupt the ability of the ecosystems to function, which then decreases the value of the ecosystem services that they provide. So this is going to have ecological consequences and economic consequences. Some examples of this might be if we're clearing land for um, agriculture or to build cities. And when we're clearing that land, we're gonna be removing trees that store carbon dioxide. Now remember that more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere leads to more climate change, which can lead to more storm damage, crop failure. So removing those trees is going to have problems for the natural ecological environment, but also money is going to be negatively impacted by storm damage or crop failure. Another example will be something like overfishing, which is going to lead to population collapse, which is going to financially hurt because in the future people lose fishing jobs and we will have lower fish sales in the future. Now we're going to go through all four of these, dive a little bit deeper into some examples and specifically how it is that humans can cause disruption to them. So the first one is provisioning services, which again, remember, is going to be goods that are directly provided to humans for sale or use by our ecosystems. Some examples of this could be fish, um, animals that we get from hunting, lumber for using wood for building furniture, it can also be naturally grown foods like berries, seeds, grains, honey, um, apples, like the picture shows. And then we also have goods that are made from natural resources. So either ones that are directly provided versus um, goods that are then made. So paper or medicine or rubber. So it's kind of more indirect, but it still ultimately came from that natural resource. And the way that humans are going to potentially disrupt these, and this is just some examples, there's many other ways we can do it, but some examples are going to be by over harvesting these goods, by polluting water, um, clearing land for agriculture or urbanization, things like that. And our next one is going to be um, regulating services. And remember that this is going to be where our benefit is provided by ecosystem processes that moderate natural conditions like the climate or air quality. So an example of this is going to be trees. Now, trees are a sequester. They're a carbon store. Um, a carbon sink is terminology that we've used to. 
where you have this CO2 through the process of photosynthesis ends up being sequestered into the forest, which reduces the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, less carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, reduces the rate of climate change, which then lessens the damage caused by rising sea levels or um, crop failure from droughts occurring. So getting that out of the atmosphere just through trees doing their natural thing is going to be beneficial. And another example could be how trees filter air and they absorb air pollutants. Now this is going to financially be beneficial because absorbing air pollutants means that this is going to reduce some of the healthcare costs for treating diseases like asthma or bronchitis, which come from um, air pollution. And an example of this, well, specifically this example that I talked about with trees, the way that we would disrupt this would be through deforestation, cutting down trees. Our next ecosystem service is going to be supporting services which is where the natural ecosystems support the processes that we do ourselves, making them less costly and easier for us. One example of this could be how wetland plant roots filter pollutants, leading to cleaner groundwater that we don't have to pay as much to purify with expensive water treatment plants. So if you let this water go through a wetland, it's going to naturally filter out some of these pollutants instead of us having to do it ourselves. Another example is pollinators. So bees or other insects pollinating our agricultural crops, which then leads to more crop production. And financially, it's beneficial because more crop production is going to be higher profits for those companies. And a way that we as humans can disrupt this service is by disrupting um, pollinators by habitat loss or doing things like filling in wetlands for development um, and just disrupting this service. Now, the last one that we have is cultural services. And this is where we have revenue from recreational activities, hunting, fishing licenses, park fees, tourism related spending. And then we also profit from scientific discoveries made in ecosystems, which helps us with our overall knowledge for agriculture or health or just educational knowledge from these services. Some examples of this could be if you have beautiful landscape, this is going to draw tourists who want to pay to enter parks. They're going to spend money at local stores or restaurants or camping fees. A great example here would be Mount Rainier, which brings in people from all over the world to come and visit just because it's a naturally beautiful landscape on its own. Another example of this would be uh, fishermen pay for fishing licenses to be able to catch fish in clean rivers. So this is going to generate revenue from their fishing licenses. And a third example is going to be scientists learning about plant compounds that can then lead to the creation of new medicines, which are sold for a profit. So again, that financial benefit from this. And this can all be disrupted by things like deforestation, pollution, urbanization, which is where you're coming in and building like cities and buildings and parking lots and all of that. So your practice FRQ for topic 2.2, the suggested skill that you're going to practice is explain environmental concepts and processes. So what I'd like you to do is to describe an ecosystem service that an intact forest ecosystem would provide for humans. Then identify one human activity that could degrade this ecosystem service and explain how the activity decreases the value of the ecosystem service. So that's gonna be your practice FRQ. Those were your notes for 2.2 on ecosystem services, and I hope they were helpful.